Good afternoon, folks. Buenos tardes. Buenos tardes. That's good afternoon, in case you're wondering. For those of you that haven't done your Spanish lessons yet today. But anyway, today is it's, it's another q and I got a, another email from some friends of mine, Tim and Tracy. They're subscribers. They have some questions, and I want to share those questions with you. So here we go. Uh, but actually, first, you got to watch this, okay? Sorry. <laughs> hey. Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. Well, this is the second time today that I've done this video. The first time, as you can see from the start, before my intro, that my hair is all messed up. I stepped out on the balcony to look at something that was going on outside. Big old puff of wind came and knocked it sideways and and I did this whole 20 something minute video with my hair all screwed up so I had to fix it and do this over again but anyway Tim and Tracy they had some great questions for me and I'm going to answer them for you now that the intro is over with and we'll get started on this I, I before I get started I, I would just want to throw a question to everybody here uh Somebody told me that I should rebrand my channel, and I want to know what you think about it. I'm thinking about changing the name to Grumpy Old Gringo. I don't know where in the hell anybody gets the idea that I'm grumpy. You know, I don't know what you think. You know, how in the hell do you know when somebody's grumpy? Maybe I am a grump. I, who the hell cares? Anyway, so let's get on with these damn questions, all right? So, looking back, looking back at your move, in terms of the actual process to move and acquire your visa and cedula, what do you wish you had done then, and what would you have done differently? So my answer is, i got three answers to this question, Tim. I, I'd put some stuff in short-term storage. I really would have. I would have rented a small storage shed, shed, shack, whatever you call it, and I would have put some stuff in it, you know. I maybe even would have held off on selling my car. Now, the only reason why I say that is because my car is fairly new. It's less than a year old. Or maybe it was just a year old. You know, and I might would have kept it just in case. Because, you know, when that, when you get here and that honeymoon period's over with, you start, sometimes it's easy to think, uh, do I want to go back? You know, but then if you just stick around, you end up, you, you won't be thinking that for very long. All right. The second thing I said was have the visa facilitators handle the office deal process for me instead of me doing it. It's, it's, folks, it's so easy to think, oh, I can do this, I can handle this and save a couple bucks. Let me tell you what you don't want to save money on, okay, in your move to Ecuador or any other country. Don't pinch pennies on getting your visa stuff. Hire a professional, hire a professional, Okay, and have it done right. And pay the price, okay? It, you've heard that expression, pay me now or pay me later. I paid later. <laughs> I should have paid and had the office steel process handled by Gringo Visa, which is who I used. And instead, I tried to do it myself, and it ended up costing me more money because I didn't get the stuff back in time before. I didn't get it back before I left to come here, and I ended up having to pay... An outrageous speed to have my documentation DHL'd to me here. So what would I have done? I would have had it done by Gringo Visa in the States. I would have had all that stuff taken care of by then. They gave me a turnkey package price, of which I paid, you know, but I, I, I left out the part. I would have had to pay a little bit of extra to have the office deal process handled for me, and I wish I'd done it. And then the last thing I wrote is, I would have brought more clothes with me. It's, if you're a big guy like I am, I don't know how big I am. I know some guys here are a lot bigger than me. I'm only 6'1", 228 pounds or something like that. We're size 13 shoes, and I cannot find size 13 shoes here anywhere. I, I met a guy here a couple weeks ago that wears size 18 shoes. He's a big boy. I don't think he gets in a taxi. I think he puts it on. I would have bought shirts. I would have bought other pants. 
If you're on the coast, you're going to be here in Monte. You're going to wear shorts most of the time. But this time of the year, you might find yourself wearing some pants once in a while because it gets a little bit cooler, you know, especially in the early morning, late at night. But I would have brought more clothes. I would have had it. I think I would have purchased another suitcase and packed more clothes. Second question, Tim and Tracy, is as you consider changing locations from Monte to another city slash town, what criteria slash features are most important to you? Well, of course, number one is having access to health care. Don't go to a little town that doesn't have a hospital. I mean, there's, if, there's several coastal towns that are close to Monta that are great places to live, and beautiful beaches to go hang out on. But man, I'll tell you, if you have a heart attack, you got to get to Monta. You got to get to the hospital. So you got to think about that. That's the number one thing is access to health care. The second thing I wrote down is finding a quieter neighborhood to live in. There are quieter neighborhoods right here in Monta that I could live in. I wouldn't have the view that I have, but you know, you hear me talk about peace and quiet and you hear me talking about noise all the time. There's no secret that I have a problem with noise. I've gotten used to a good majority of it, but there's some of it I don't think I'll ever get used to. I'll never get used to hearing somebody playing music at a party two blocks away that I can imagine looking at their amplifier and it has a volume control that goes from one to a hundred and I guarantee you it'll be set on 101. I've talked to people that live in some of these other communities like Kodakachi, Loa. Even when I was in Cuenca I found a really quiet neighborhood to live in. The only time I ever heard anything, a dog next door would bark during the daytime, but the people brought him in at night and you know it's very peaceful and quiet and you know Monta has got some pretty noisy neighborhoods. Pretty noisy. It's okay during the week probably but boy the weekend you don't plan on if you if you stay in the Barbaskill area Airbnb at like Poseidon or the Wyndham or Mykonos if you're gonna sleep on the weekends you better bring some headphones with you or some some noise canceling headphones or bring some earplugs. They make those foam earplugs that you squeeze together and you shove them in your ear. They expand and they really they work really good here. They sell them here in the pharmacies. Finding a quiet neighborhood to live in. That was number two. Number three, have my own transportation, whether a car or a scooter. That's a controversial topic here. There's talk about you know, don't buy a car, don't, it's too expensive. Well, that's bullshit. There's cars, you can buy cars here for, you can buy brand new cars here for less than $20,000. They're not going to be what you would expect to find in the U.S. for only $20,000, but you can find a decent car here. A Chevrolet, a Toyota, a Suzuki uh, for under $20,000. A Citroen, somebody told me a Citroen diesel. You get one of those, I don't know if they'll be under 20K, but super cheap to run. And of course you hear about, you know, all the negative talk about, oh, maintenance and upkeep and all that kind of stuff. You know, for me, a car would work out pretty good because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. But the nice thing about buying a car here, you can buy a car here and when you're ready to leave or you want to get rid of it, you will be able to sell it at a premium at a premium folks because used cars are a hot commodity here especially if they're in good shape don't buy a chinese car fall apart on you before you get home with them uh, do you have a list of possible locations to move to yes i want to see the following cities and here's why uh loja i, I would love to go see loja i want to go visit it. it's in the southern part of the country um south of Cuenca, you know, and it's in the mountains. It's beautiful there. there lots of expats there. It's supposed to be a very expat-friendly place to live. I've often thought about Vilcabamba, but i tell you folks, I can't get excited about going to Vilcabamba, and some of you have heard me say that before because there, there's a little problem with Vilcabamba, and that's the problem there uh, from what I've read in the local papers and so forth is uh, the indigenous population there in Vilcabamba, they just don't care for us expats. I'm sure that if anybody wants to prove me wrong, you knock yourself out. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to diss Vilcabama, but 
I've heard some horror stories about some things that have happened to some expats that live in Vilcabama, unfortunately. And it had to do with dealing with uh, uh, local indigenous people. They just don't want us there. So Vilcabama is at the very bottom of the list. As much as I've, I've heard about it being a really wonderful place to live, climate's supposed to be like 75 degrees every day of the year. And uh, not for me. The other one besides Loja would be Cotacachi. Cotacachi is on the other side of Quito. It's just north of Quito. It's a great little town. It's surrounded by some other great little towns. It's surrounded by snow-capped mountains. There's a beautiful lake up there. The big industry in Cotacachi is leather. You can go up there and get a leather jacket made and for pennies on the dollar. Food's supposed to be really good, great entertainment. It's kind of like a little mini Cuenca. I'm going to visit. I'm going to go visit Cotacachi. As a matter of fact, I'm going there before I go to Loja. And when, I don't know, but sometime very soon. I guarantee you, I'll do a video about it. I'll do a bunch of videos about it. All right? The other place is Cadetro, Mexico. That's not in Ecuador. So I'm done. If I don't like Loja or Cotacachi, or I don't decide to move to Cuenca, or I don't decide to stay right here in Mancha, and if I leave Ecuador, I'm going to Mexico. Great community, great city, Cadetro is north of Mexico City. It's an international city. It's very modern, super modern. They've got quiet neighborhoods to live in. Cost of living is okay. I can meet the qualifications for getting my visa there, unlike some that are less fortunate and can't do it because their income requirements are uh, significantly higher than what they were when I came here. I think it's like $2,600 a month or something like that, or you have to have certain amount of money in the bank and show that you've had it for like 90 days or something like that, but I don't know. I'm sorry, this video is not about living in Mexico, but anyway, uh, and then of course my last choice would be back home to Mesa. God forbid, I don't want to have to go back to the United States. I do not want to have to go back there. If I got really ill, I would need the VA and I'd probably go back for that purpose, but I can't think of any other reason to go back there, at least not under this administration. Let's see what happens under the next administration. So probably never get to do that. Number three, taking into account your experience in both Cuenca and Monta, if you could transplant any type of business from the U.S. into one or both of those cities, what would it be? And then he said, for example, what do you believe would be a great business opportunity for expats in Ecuador? Okay, number one, right here in Monta. I would have a McDonald's. There is no McDonald's in Monta. There's McDonald's in Cuenca, Quito, Guayaquil. Not in Monta. Why? I don't know. I, there's a lot of questions about Monta. Why not this? Why not that? They got it in every other city in this country, but no McDonald's. That should be a crime. There needs to be a McDonald's. As a matter of fact, I love McDonald's so much I'm going to make a promise to you. If you come to Ecuador and you settle in Monta and you have to go to Waikil to get your cedula, which is where you'll have to go to get it, unless you want to go all the way to Quito or Cuenca, you have to go to Waikil to get your cedula. Well, guess what's right next door to the civil ministry building in Waikil where you get your cedula? Nothing other than a McDonald's. If you come here and you go in there, and you're going to go with Juan Zambrano or another driver, I'll ride with you, and I'll buy you lunch at McDonald's, okay? That's my promise to you, okay? McDonald's. I'd have a McDonald's here. The other thing, bars and restaurants, especially bars. I would love to see a bar here where you walk into it, and it's so dark that you have to stand there for five minutes trying to see where you'll be required to have a flashlight to find your way to your bar stool. So dark. And I want a horseshoe shaped bar where I can stand up there and flirt with the bartender. I'd love to have a nice little bar to go to here. I can't find one yet. There's restaurants on the beach down here and there's places all over the place that they have bars, but it's just not the same thing, folks. It's not the same. The last thing I listed was bed and breakfast. I don't know how important that is, but there's a little hotel right behind me here. Some <clears throat> people have heard me mention it several times. I'd like to have that little hotel. It's about, I don't know, 15, 20 rooms. It's an old, built, old historic building. 
been here for years. It's been here when there was nothing else here. And I would love to have that place and turn it into a bed and breakfast, serve breakfast in the morning, and have a piano bar. It's got a little tiny bar. I'd, I'd turn all, cover the windows up and turn all the lights off, and I'd have a bar, fully stocked bar in there, and we'd just have music playing right there. And that would be like a piano bar. You know, that's what I would do. We need something like that here. Number four, discounting language. Boy, this is a good one. Discounting language, what was, is the most difficult cultural obstacle you and other expats have faced in assimilating to Ecuador? I, you know what, guys? I could come up with a huge list here. I came up with six items. I'm looking down here at my, my computer. I have my laptop right here, and I could come up with a whole bunch, but I don't want to make it too negative. I don't, this is not about negativity, but anyway, here we go. I'm starting off getting used to the way things look. I've had people telling me, oh my God, and I experienced this myself. I came here, the first thing I thought after leaving Waikil was like, my God, this place looked like a hurricane came through here and nobody, nobody cleaned it up. It's a mess. You see so much destruction and so much poverty. You see houses with no windows they have openings, but no glass windows and no curtains, no nothing. It's all up and down this coastline, it's like that. I'm not meaning this in a, I'm not trying to be negative or be, be down on Ecuador or down on the coast or Monta, but it's, there's a lot of old architecture that's been here for years and they've suffered from several hurricanes. And as you know, folks, there's not a lot of money here. And these people have not been able to repair the infrastructure here like we would do back in the States where we have trillions of dollars, you know, in our budget. I bet you that'll stir up a little political shit storm here. But anyway, no, no talking politics on this channel. Uh, number two, dealing with the lack of technology that we're used to using in the U.S. One of the things that I'd always like to do when I was in the U.S., I go to the grocery store, and at the point of sale system at the counter, I could use my phone to pay for my groceries. Don't have that here. Maybe they do it in Quito, maybe. I don't know. Maybe in Waikil, but they don't have it here in Monta, and I didn't see it when I was in Cuenca. It would be nice to have point of sale systems. It would be nice to have a point of sale system in their taxi, you know, like we do in New York City and some of the other bigger cities in the, U in the U.S. where you can pay for your taxi with your debit card. God, we need that here bad. There's a lot of technology that's missing here, folks. I mean, don't, don't, I mean, I, I haven't been able to find a, a laptop computer here with a 9.9 processor in it. I, you know, there's, I'm sure they're here somewhere, but, oh my God, it'd be so outrageously expensive. You're better off to buy one in the United States and have somebody mule it in for you. Technology, I and mean, they are behind the times here in technology. The other thing, number three, lack of quality red meat. Here comes another shit storm. All the vegans are now gonna, please reserve your comments, keep them to yourself, folks, about veganism and red, against red meat. I don't, we don't need to hear all that. For those of you that like red meat, you're gonna have a hard time finding good quality red meat. We do not have a USDA prime rib here. The best beef around here comes from Argentina, Argentinian beef. Here in Monta, I've yet to find a good steak. I've not had one yet. I've tried, can't find a good steak here, ribeye or any kind of steak. You're better off just go buy hamburger meat and just make hamburger patties. There's a meat store here in Monta. I haven't tried them out yet. I'll do a video about it when I do. They supposedly have really, really good beef, and I'll be anxious to try it out and report it to you. In Cuenca, I had one of the best ribeye or filet mignons that I've had in a long time at the Society, let's see, the Jazz Society Cafe. It cost me 14 bucks, nice thick filet mignon. I don't know where it came from, don't care. It was good, it was tender, I could cut it with a fork, it was delicious. So, especially in the coastal region here, it's going to be hard to find, especially affordable red meat.
Uh, number four, and I know this is going to open up another storm, but here it goes. Lack of English-speaking professionals, particularly in the medical services industry. Now, let me explain myself, okay? Before you start telling me, Don, if you want to live there, you got to learn the language, blah, blah, shit. Okay? I know i got to learn the language, but, you know, I'm 70 years old, and it's not that easy to learn Spanish and fluently to where I can go to a doctor and talk to a doctor and, and tell them what's wrong with me. Thank God Dr. Garcia speaks great English. But I, when, I, when I went to a dermatologist here, I had to have an interpreter, you know, and they teach English in the schools here. They teach it in the schools, but they don't want to use it, it seems like. I'm sure this is going to open up a big fight and an argument from people, especially locals, I'm sorry, you know, but I, I just wish that in some of the arenas, like in the mall, in the clinic, where they see expats and locals, that they would have some English-speaking people in there that we could talk to uh, without having to have an interpreter. That's all I'm going to say on that. Please, no, keep your, your, your fight to yourself, okay? Number five, getting used to earthquakes. <laughs> That's a good one. Let me see here. Let me see what's been going on here in the last few hours. There are earthquakes here. I have an app on my phone called Earthquake. And what do you know? It's very quiet, you know. Uh, there was only one today at 1018. In Ajoie, guys, that's up near Waikil. There's only 3.6, so nobody, you know, would have felt it. But the fault line runs right off the shore here, and man, we get a lot of little earthquakes here, little shakers and little tremors, you know. They had a big one in 2016. I hope to hell we don't have one of those, at least while I'm here. You know, it's been quite a experience for me. A lot of people say, oh, you'll get used to them. I'm never going to get used to an earthquake, they, especially when they come in the middle of the night. Terrible. Terrible. Getting used to earthquakes. Number six on the last one, getting used to having to pay taxi drivers in cash and dealing with the local taxis that don't use the lights on their cars to indicate when they are occupied or not. You have to have coin. You got to have change to use the taxis. Some taxis will have change. But ask them before you get in the car. Before, let me repeat that. Find out if they have changed for your 5 or your 10 or your 20 before you get in the car. Because if you show up at your destination and you say, oh, well, you got, uh, here you go for your dollar fifty fare, you know, they're going to say, oh, I ain't got no change. It's going to happen to you. Then you'll get to learn what being green gold is. It's a shame that the taxis, number one, they don't use the meters here like they do in Cuenca, you, you can, it's so easy to get gringo by the taxis here. You almost always got to have correct change. That's why I always tell people all the time, keep your little dollar coins. Keep all the change. Keep your pocket change. Keep it for taxis because you're going to need it. So that's all on that question. All right, so number five, as an avid breakfast connoisseur, is there a traditional Ecuadorian breakfast that you have tried and enjoyed? Yes, I love ayacas. Here's the way you spell it right here. And it's a breakfast deal it's a wrap it's in a they wrap it in banana leaf it's it's cornmeal and inside the cornmeal is uh pulled chicken like you know pulled like shredded chicken like shredded chicken breast they put peanut sauce in there all oh, that stuff is so good and they put a part of or a quarter of a, a hard-boiled egg some really sweet um, raisins that are super good and and then they put cilantro on it. Now, not everybody likes cilantro. I don't like cilantro. I'm allergic to it. I don't, I'm allergic to it, and I don't like it. So when I eat my ayakas, I turn it upside down because the cilantro is on the top. I turn it upside down and eat it from the bottom to the top. When I see the cilantro, then I start picking around it, and then I'm, I'm done with it. Okay? They cost a couple dollars, two fifty at the most. They're all over the place. They're super good. You can eat them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, but it's called ayaka. I just showed you how to spell it. When you get here, buy one. You'll love it. How about the coffee in Ecuador? Better, the same, or worse than the U.S.? These are Tracy's questions, and she loves her breakfast and coffee. Coffee here is grown here, and I happen to think it's very good. 
I don't know. I mean, I'm not a connoisseur of coffee. I, I, I'm in the United States. I love Starbucks coffee. I hate his store-bought coffee like Folgers and all that crap he's, they sell on the shelves. The, the coffee that you get here is like straight from the fields. And they grind it and they every cup you get is a brewed cup of coffee. The only bad thing about coffee here is that they, the restaurants don't walk around with a coffee pot and serve you. Every cup of coffee you get is a fresh brewed cup of coffee and you pay for it. You don't get free refills. Not, not common here at all. So, but you know, you can buy the, the good stuff, the good coffee in the store and make it at home. Coffee's grown here and everything is very good. As always, we appreciate what you do. Your video sense of humor, candid reflections, and insights are a tremendous value to us and we plan our own move. Cannot wait to sit down over breakfast and get to know you. Tim and Tracy, El Paso, Texas is where they're from. And I can't wait for you guys to get here, Tim and Tracy. Looking forward to meeting you. Uh, Tim and Tracy always leave very nice comments in my, in my channel, and I always appreciate that. So anyway, that's it, folks. Uh, thanks for watching my videos. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It helps me a lot. I don't ask for people for money. I don't do Patreon. But I get a little bit of money from advertising on my channels. And so I get paid for every time everybody leaves a comment, gives me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and by the way, for those of you that want to give thumbs down, just so you know, folks, every time I post a video, immediately there's two thumbs down. There's two people out there that don't like me, if you can believe it. Pretty hard to believe. But it happens, you know. If you don't like my videos, go take a nice long walk on a really short pier, and you'll be a happy person. There are lots of other YouTubers that have videos. So anyway, that's it. Thanks so much. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Let me just go to the restroom. Okay, alright. Oh, you can't! Oh, where are we?